Okay, so picture this. There's this absolutely massive active volcano out in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Most people have, like, never even heard of it. And scientists, they're saying it might actually be getting ready to erupt. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I saw that IFL science piece, too. It's definitely grabbing attention. Totally. And we're not talking some, you know, dormant thing. This is the axial seamount. It's underwater. And, uh... Yeah, it's showing some pretty interesting signs right now. Exactly. It's not just sitting there. There's definite activity, real-time monitoring. Right. So, welcome everyone to another deep dive. Today we're plunging into why this specific underwater volcano is such a big deal for scientists. What they're actually seeing down there, the, uh, the rumblings and the swelling. Yeah, and maybe most importantly for you listening, why you probably don't need to worry about it causing chaos on land. Right, context is key here. Our goal is just to give you a clear picture, you know, un understand this cool geological thing without getting bogged down in too much jargon. And hey, if you enjoy these kinds of explorations, definitely uh, hit like, subscribe so you catch the next one. And yeah, drop us a comment. Let us know what are science topics you want us to tackle. Okay, let's get into it. First things first, location. Where exactly is this axial seamount? Okay, so it's way out there, about oh. 300 miles west of the U.S. coast. 300 miles? And deep. We're talking almost 5,000 feet below the surface. So nearly a mile down, that explains why it's not exactly common knowledge. Pretty much. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. But the location isn't just deep, it's geologically really interesting. How so? What makes that spot special? Well, two main things, really. First, it's part of the Cobb Eichelberg Seamount chain. Think of that like a trail left by a volcanic hotspot. Like Hawaii, sort of, but underwater? Kind of, yeah. A plume of hot mantle material punching through the oceanic plate as the plate moves over it. But what makes Axial really unusual is that it's sitting directly on top of the Juan de Fuca Ridge. Okay, the Juan de Fuca Ridge. Rem remind me. So that's a mid-ocean ridge. It's where the Pacific Plate and the smaller Juan de Fuca Plate are actually pulling apart. Ah, right. A spreading center. New seafloor is being made there. Exactly. Magma wells up to fill the gap. And that Juan de Fuca Plate is also diving under the North American Plate further east. That's subduction. So the whole area is incredibly active. So Axial has this hot spot, and it's on a spreading ridge. That sounds volatile. It is. William Wilcock at the University of Washington called it pretty unusual. He said it's a genuine hot spot right on the ridge. And it's not small either. It rises uh, something like 3,600 feet above the surrounding seafloor. That's huge for an underwater feature. It really is. And this combination, a hot spot on a mid-ocean ridge, it's actually quite rare globally. So it gives scientists a unique place to study how these two major geological processes interact. Fascinating. And didn't the article mention something about a caldera on top? Yes, exactly. There's a big depression at the summit. That formed when the magma chamber underneath collapsed after previous eruptions. It's, you know, more evidence of its very active past. Okay, so a geologically unique, very active spot, but it's not just rock down there, is it? The article mentioned life. Oh, absolutely. That's maybe one of the most amazing parts. Around the hydrothermal vents on Axial Seamount, there's just this explosion of life. Hydrothermal vents. Those are the super hot underwater geysers, right? Yeah, basically. Spewing out water that's incredibly hot, over 700 degrees Fahrenheit, or 370 Celsius. Whoa. And it's loaded with chemicals, like dissolved minerals and volcanic gases straight from the magma below. You'd think it'd be totally sterile. It's not. Not at all. It's teeming. You have specialized microbes that don't need sunlight. They actually eat those chemicals, chemosynthesis. It's, they form the base of the food web down there. Exactly. And then you get things like tube worms, crabs, even certain kinds of octopuses. Octopuses. Living in water that hot? How? It's incredible, isn't it? They're adapted to the unique conditions near the vents. Maybe not right in the hottest flow, but certainly thriving in that extreme environment. Mm -hmm. Deborah Kelly, also from UW, she called the whole area an oasis of life. An oasis, yeah. And she mentioned something really interesting, too. Different vents, even if they seem chemically similar, can have totally distinct communities of microbes, like little islands, she said. Wow. So each vent is its own little world. Mm -hmm. Does studying that life tell us anything, maybe about like early life on Earth or elsewhere? Potentially, yes. These extreme environments, they push life to adapt in really novel ways. It certainly gives us clues about the limits of life and how it might arise or persist in seemingly hostile places. Mind-blowing stuff. Okay, so we've got this unique geology, unique life, but the big news now is this potential eruption, right? Right. Why the buzz? Right, so 
Late last year, 2024, researchers announced, I think it was at the AGU conference. The American Geophysical Union. Yeah. They presented data showing the volcano might be getting close to another eruption. The main clue is inflation. Inflation, like it's swelling up. Exactly. Think of it like pumping air into a balloon. As fresh magma fills the chamber beneath the volcano, it pushes the ground above it upwards. And the key thing is, the amount of inflation they're measuring now is almost exactly the same level it reached right before the last eruption in 2015. So it's like it's full again based on past behavior. That seems to be the thinking. William Chadwick from Oregon State University, he crunched the numbers. Based on how quickly it inflated before the last few eruptions, he suggested the window for the next one could be, well, basically any time between now and the end of 2025. So we could be talking fairly soon. Could be. Wilcock, the UW researcher, has suggested this inflation level might be a pretty reliable threshold for Axial. When it hits that mark, it tends to go. And it's basically at that mark now. Okay, imminent is a strong word, but... It sounds like a strong indicator. But surely it's not just about inflation. Aren't there other signs like earthquakes? That's the complicating factor, yes. Usually before an eruption, as magma moves and stresses the rock, you get a big increase in small earthquakes, swarms of them. And they're not seeing that yet? Not really, no. Not at the levels they saw before 2015. Deborah Kelly mentioned they're seeing maybe 200, 300 quakes a day now, sometimes spiking up towards 1,000 with the tides. Okay. But before the 2015 event, they were expecting, and eventually saw, numbers climbing above 2,000 per day. So the current seismicity is, well, quieter than expected for an imminent eruption. Hmm. So the ground is swollen, but it's not shaking as much as last time. That's right. confusing. It adds uncertainty, definitely. <laughs> it highlights that predicting eruptions, even at the best monitored underwater volcano in the world, which Axial arguably is, thanks to the Ocean Observatory's initiative cabled array, mm. It's still not an exact science. Mark Zumberg from Scripps actually called it the most well-instrumented submarine volcano on the planet. So lots of data, but still some puzzle pieces missing or maybe behaving differently this time. Could be. Maybe the magma is moving differently. Or maybe the threshold for triggering large earthquake swarms hasn't quite been reached yet, even with the inflation. Okay, so let's get to the big question for everyone listening on land. If this thing does go, what happens to us? tsunamis, earthquakes. Okay, deep breath here. The scientists are very clear on this, no. No, just- Pretty much no. That. An eruption at Axial Seamount is extremely unlikely to cause any noticeable effects on land. No tsunamis hitting the coast, no significant earthquakes felt on shore. It poses no risk to human life or property. That's really reassuring. Chadwick seemed definite about that too. Absolutely. He specifically said there's no need for public concern or economic disruption. It's just too far away and too deep underwater. The ocean basically smothers the impact. Right. That immense pressure and volume of water absorbs the energy. Exactly. So if it's no danger to us, why are scientists so excited about the possibility? Why is it a big deal? Ah, because scientifically, it's an incredible opportunity. Think about it. Deborah Kelly pointed out that about three quarters, 75% of all Earth's volcanic activity happens along these mid-ocean ridges. Wow, most of the planet's volcanism is underwater then. By far. But we almost never get to see it happen in detail, especially not on this particular ridge segment, with this level of instrumentation already in place. So if it erupts while all those sensors are there? They get a front row seat. They can watch the eruption unfold in real time, track the lava flows, see how the hydrothermal vents change, how the unique ecosystems respond immediately. It's a natural laboratory experiment on a grand scale. That sounds invaluable for understanding how our planet actually works. Totally. Wilcock basically said, whatever happens, whether it erupts soon or just keeps inflating, they're going to learn something new and important. It's pure discovery. And I guess that kind of research, understanding these deep sea processes could lead to other things, better tech maybe. For sure. Pushing the boundaries of deep sea monitoring, robotics, understanding mineral formation. And, you know, for listeners who find this stuff fascinating, oceanography, geology, there are actually tons of resources out there, documentaries, books. Yeah, maybe we can link some in the description. And actually, this might be a good spot to mention for those interested. Sometimes our sponsors offer gear or educational materials related to these topics. So keep an eye out for that, too. Good point. It's a growing field of interest. Okay, so wrapping this up then, Axial Seamount. Fascinating place. Unique location. Hot spot meets ridge. Teeming with weird and wonderful life around those vents. And potentially nearing an eruption based on that significant inflation, although the earthquake activity is still a bit low. Right. 
So a possibility of eruption, but not a certainty and definitely not a threat to those of us on land. The key takeaway really is the science, isn't it? This amazing chance to watch planetary processes in action. Exactly. A rare window into the engine room of the planet happening deep beneath the waves. It really makes you think, doesn't it, about all that volcanic activity happening constantly, miles down, shaping the very planet we live on, mostly unseen. Absolutely. How much more is going on down there that we just haven't even discovered yet. The vast majority of the ocean floor is still unexplored. A truly mind-boggling thought. What other colossal forces are at work in the deep? Leaves you wondering, for sure. Well, that was a fantastic deep dive. Thanks so much for unpacking Axial Seamount with us. My pleasure. It's a fascinating subject. And thanks to all of you for listening. If you enjoyed getting nerdy about underwater volcanoes with us, please do hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into science. <laughs> And definitely leave us a comment. What else should we explore? We'd love to hear your ideas. Stay tuned for our next deep dive.